The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Welcome everyone once again to our daily doctrinal Bible study of uh, the Vic Balbido Evangelistic Ministry. So we uh, go right away to our preparation for the study of the Word of God by uh, using the principle of 1 John 1, 9 for you believer and for you unbeliever it is faith alone in Christ alone. Therefore let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, because we belong to Thee, we have the right and the privilege of fulfilling the function of our priesthood by listening to the teaching of your word. We recognize that our growth, our orientation to life, our understanding of your plan, your purpose, your design for each one of us is based upon the constant, daily, consistent assimilation of your word. We recognize, Father, that there is no substitute to your word, that there is no capacity for our life that can be counterfeited apart from what we have because of thee. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you for providing for us this portion of your word. May God, the Holy Spirit, now sanctify us to the nourishment of our soul. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. The title of our discussion or study today is Dying Grace. Okay, if you are ready, we will start right away. Now, first of all, it is but natural to describe a person's death as an accident. But as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and as a child of God through faith in Him, there are no accidents, because in the Christian life there is no such thing. God has a purpose for keeping the believer alive on this earth, but He also has a purpose for taking any of us home to heaven at just the right time. A believer who dies physically has gone home at the right time, and that is God's perfect timing. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 20 says, There is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every event under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die. A believer who dies is taken home to heaven to prepare for or to prepare him or her and others for death just as the believer who dies was prepared for death. You see, life hangs by a very slender thread, and that thread can be snapped at any time, at any moment. None of us really knows when death will come. According to James 4.14, you don't even know what tomorrow will bring, what your life will be, for you are like a vapor that appears for a little time, then vanishes away. Remember, God's timing is perfect, and He is the one who decides the time, the manner, and the place of our death. You know that one day in the future, you will die. Knowing that you have no control at all over the time or manner of your death, gives you great confidence, for death and resurrection are strictly the Lord's victory. During our lifetime, we make many decisions 
because all of life is decision making. Some are good decisions and some are bad decisions. But there is only one decision that we make during our life to prepare us for that moment when we depart from this life. This will be the greatest decision that prepares us for death and dying. One reason any believer dies is so all of us who are loved or left behind might understand the importance of eternal salvation through personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 16, 31. A believer dies so you might have a chance for eternal life. Of course, it's not the believer who gives us eternal life. A believer's death gives us a chance to receive eternal life from God. The Lord often takes people from this life so others might hear the gospel message. Time as we know it is just a drop in the bucket compared to eternity. Therefore, being prepared for death should be our number one priority. And when we consider it as our number one priority, there is only one preparation for it, faith alone in Christ alone. To all who have made the decision to believe in Jesus Christ, let it, it be known that remembering a loved one who has died is to celebrate a victory, a victory over death. You know what? A believer who dies physically is very much alive. Right at this moment, all believers who have died are very much alive. Therefore, we celebrate a victory for our believers' physical death, and we are doing exactly what these believers would want us to do, telling their loved ones and friends that they love them and want them to be with them forever in heaven. For each one of us then, there is only one decision by which we prepare for death and dying, and by which we enter into eternal life. If these dead believers had no eternal life, each one of us has the opportunity to also have it through faith alone in Christ alone. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. This is a verse that winner believers knew so well while they were still with us. They truly believe in Christ that right now they are in a far greater place that can never be found here on earth. Yes, they are in a place where things are far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think. Ephesians 3.20 Thus, to be prepared for death is to be prepared for this life and the life after death, eternal life. These dead winner believers were such wonderful persons as we have known, as we have known them as human beings. As believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, they loved the Lord and the Word of God. So let's remember this. There are no accidents in the Christian life. A winner believer is no accident. It was the Lord's time to take them home so you might understand what they believed in. They wanted you to believe. They loved you so much and in that sense they died so you could hear the message, how to be prepared for death. So I repeat, a winner believer's death was no accident, just as it is no accident that you are here right now to hear God's message. Now, <clears throat> you who are here for a purpose, you are here for a purpose. Did you know that? A winner believer who dies wants you to be prepared for death, even as he was. Winner believers who died want to see you forever in heaven. 
their death will be meaningful to you if you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way of, way of salvation and no one else. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation on any other under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Then the Lord can transfer you to heaven when he decides the time, the manner, the place of your death. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. It is so important that you understand that a winner believer who died under circumstances would cause you to think about death. So ask yourself this question. Am I prepared for death or not? A winner believer who dies is prepared and he is now with the Lord. While we will miss them very much, the Lord had an infinitely greater plan for their life, that they might depart from this life, that they might go through the valley of the shadow, Psalms 23, 4, quickly and arrive in heaven. Now you have the opportunity to learn about the Lord Jesus Christ. And to the winner believers, family, and friends, life must go on. It is true there is great sorrow and grief, and we know how they will miss them. Just as they have been united on earth, so they will be united forever in heaven. This is not goodbye forever. This is see you later. Yes, they will see them again. They will all be united again in heaven in God's perfect time. They will see and understand and know for all eternity that God had a, had a purpose and a reason for taking the winner believer home in heaven. But listen, the winner believer who died did not die in vain. God had a purpose and that purpose was fulfilled when he took these believers home. At this moment, in the privacy of your soul, forming the sentences in thought only, inaudibly, you can tell God the Father that you are believing in Jesus Christ, and in that moment, you possess eternal life. So simple, isn't it? In that moment, you have assurance and guarantee of victory over death. This is your privilege, your privacy, and your opportunity. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time where you showed us how fragile life is. That what you said in your word, life is just a vapor, that it can just vanish away any time. May the death of any believer Winner believer, remind us that life indeed is fragile and short, that we may be challenged to prepare ourselves for the next life by appropriating ourselves to your perfect plan. Firstly, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and then to study your precious word, thus reach our goal, which is spiritual maturity. And by then, we can have the assurance of a home in heaven in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.